Hello, my name is Derek Johnson. I'm a product manager for SAP Analytics Cloud, and I focus focused on planning topics. So this is our fourth session. Where we're going to be looking at data actions, and we're going to be reviewing these in more detail. The good news is that we've included data actions as part of our exercise. So if you're performing the exercise or already have completed, you will already have some idea how data actions work. So really, data actions, uh, there's three things that we can include in a data action at this time. And uh, the three things are copies uh, within a model, so we can move data within the model itself. Uh, we can also move data between models, and then we have advanced formulas here as well. So all of these uh, data actions can have multiple steps, so you don't, you're not limited to just have one data action doing one step, but you can start to chain these, uh, these activities together and we'll do that as part of the exercise. So the first one I'd like to cover is really this uh, concept of a uh, copying data within a model. And this is really quite useful from a planning perspective. Uh, some of the common use cases are where you may want to create a version that blends both actuals and forecast data into one version. Uh, this is uh, very easy to accomplish using a copy action where we're copying data between the model or, or within the model and then uh, we can copy the actuals into the first part of, uh, let's just say, through 2019, and then anything after we could copy another forecast version into that as well. So it's very easy to use these data actions to do these types of activities. Uh, another thing that we can do within the, the copy uh, data action is that we can start to aggregate data here as well. And this is very useful if you have data coming in, and actuals, for example, that's at a very detailed level, but maybe you want to aggregate the data a little bit from a planning perspective. And this is very easy to do as well. You just simply go into uh, the aggregate functions uh, within the layout screen, and then you can say how you'd like to aggregate the data. So uh, in our case, we may be looking at something like uh, in headcount planning or workforce, and maybe we have the data at a very detailed level where we have age as part of, part of our data that's coming over from actuals. But maybe from a planning perspective, it's just not as relevant. So we can use this aggregate function to then assign age to not assigned, and then we don't have to really consider age when we start to do our planning activities. So the next type of copy action is the copy between models. And uh, for this, I'm very excited about it because it really opens up how we can model data within SAP Analytics Cloud. So instead of having one model that contains all of your data for uh, let's just say uh, your operating income, having sales, uh, your, your cost of goods sold, uh, any kind of workforce or headcount planning involved in one model, which could be uh, quite large and have a lot of dimensions that may not be universal to all of your planning scenarios. Uh, you can now create very specialized models and then use this copy model or copy data between models to kind of uh, take the specialized data that may be in like a sales planning or a workforce or headcount planning uh, type model and then feed something like an operating income model as well. And this just allows you to do planning at a very detailed level but then aggregate your results for uh, company or overall performance. So uh, very useful there as well. We've included it as part of the exercise so you can explore that in greater depth. And really the third item for data actions that we're excited about is the uh, scripting ability. And this really opens up some of the types of calculations we can do uh, to support our financial planning. And we've picked out a nice uh, common use case here as part of our um, exercise where we're looking at uh, workforce planning and we're looking at headcount adjustments that we may be making by month. And then we're using the um, the scripting ability to calculate opening and closing uh, balances based on uh, movements that may be occurring, which is in this case just simply uh, hiring and terminations. So it's very easy to uh, kind of loop through the data through time. So we have the ability to do for loops and then uh, to calculate our opening and closing balances. If we had a, a more complex logic that needed some kind of conditional statements or if then, uh, we're able to do that as well. Uh, one of the nicest things about our, our scripting that we've added here as part of SAP Analytics Cloud is the ability to uh, create visual scripts as well. So you can do this visually 
versus writing out scripts. So if you're not someone that is uh, really enjoys writing out uh, code or script and may think that that may be do, too difficult to do, it's not a problem. So we have a way to visually uh, create that script as well. And we've included actually both ways in our, uh, in our um, hands-on exercise. So we'll be creating the visual script and then we'll be entering code directly as well. They both get you to the same place. The capabilities are available uh, through both means. And uh, if you create a visual script, you can certainly look at the uh, underlying script that's created from that activity as well. So with that, I'm going to uh, move over to the demo piece and we'll talk in more detail. Now we're going to look at data actions in a little bit more detail. Uh, for this scenario, we're going to be looking at uh, headcount and expense planning. And we already have two data actions that are created. Essentially, the uh, first one is going to be uh, taking any adjustments that are made to our hires and our attrition to recalculate the opening and closing balances for our headcount. We have a second data action here where we're going to um, take the employee expenses that have been calculated. Um, I should have mentioned that in the first one, we're also, besides adjusting the opening and closing headcount, we will be uh, recalculating uh, some personnel expenses based on the headcount and base salaries. We're going to be calculating uh, car allowances, tax rates, uh, salary information, and hiring costs with that. So we'll get some personnel uh, expenses uh, based on that information. So that'll be our headcount planning model. Our second data action will be taking the uh, calculated values from our personnel expenses based on our headcount planning and then it'll be transferring that information into uh, another model, in this case, our P&L finance model. So let's look at how we can do that. So the first thing we're going to do is create a data action. So we'll go to Browse, uh, Process, and Data Actions, and we're going to create a new data action here. So you can provide any name you'd like. I'm just going to preface it with data action. And uh, just to make it easier to find it later on. Uh, the model for our headcount uh, starts has an XXX included. This is in uh, another system. I don't believe this This will be in the uh, tenant that you're using for uh, the Open SAP class. So this will be more showing you how you could do that, uh, do something similar um, as part of your own activities. So we find our model. Uh, now we want to save this data action, and now we can include it into a story by just inserting it into the story, and we'll see that in a, in a few minutes. Uh, but now we can actually create the data actions. And there's three types that you can create, and we've discussed these uh, already. One is, uh, you know, copying between models or within the model, and between models, and we have our advanced formulas. So I'm just going to uh, mimic this out. This would be a case if we wanted to transfer the, let's say, closing balance for headcount from 2019, and perhaps we would want to see that for uh, 2019 in January. And we can see how we can do that. So we'll just say seed 209 uh, opening headcount. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, we can create some filters. In this case, we may want to uh, just transfer the headcount. And we may want to uh, select the version in this case. So the good news is that this uh, has already been done within the data. So after I create it, uh, before executing it, I'll probably remove the step just so we don't uh, mess up our normal demo scenario. Uh, so now we have filters here. This is really restricts the data that you want to uh, move within the model. We're saying we'd like the headcount and the actual version. And then we can create some very specific rules here as well to dictate what we'd like to do when we move these values over. So the first thing we might want to do is take our closing balance and then move that to our opening balance. Uh, which is our main intention here. Uh, the second thing we might want to do is we may want to just 
restrict on time in this case, just to say we'd like to take have this apply for only one time period. So because we're taking the uh, end of year balance, we'll say 2018, December, and in this case, we're going to be copying this over to uh, 2019 for January. You can see that, you know, basically the from and to copy, uh, the from is, uh, a, is really a single value, and then the two can be multiple values here as well. But we're just selecting one just because it makes sense in this scenario. But if you wanted to copy the end of year values of something over to all months in the next year, uh, certainly you could do that by selecting multiple two values. Uh, the last one I will adjust here will be the audit trail in this case. And um, so this is just a, a little bit of a quirk in this model where we set it to uh, unassigned for our actuals. And then we could set this to another value here for stored logic calculations um, just to kind of make it consistent with the rest of the scenario. But the key thing here is that we get to select really uh, know high level filters that we want to apply and then we get to detail out the specific rules of how we'd like these transformations to occur and uh, you can see that we can get uh, pretty pretty detailed in this in how we'd like to uh, to do this copy and we also had the ability to do the append or overwrite which may make sense in your scenario for us uh, I think overwriting the values to seed our 2019 value makes a lot of sense uh, in addition to that, you could aggregate values, and this uh, is very helpful as well. So as part of our headcount model, if we had something like age in our model that we look, we wanted to you know, keep in a very detailed model just to kind of track people's ages, but maybe from a planning perspective, we didn't care about age, uh, you could aggregate the ages as well and say, set that all equal to not assigned. Um, and then you then it would just kind of aggregate those values. You wouldn't have that that new plan or this copy go down to that level of granularity. So this is what we do to see that opening plan. Uh, the next thing we can do if we want to create formulas, we can do that very easily here as well. And we're going to take a look at how we would set that up. So here I want to just say we want to calculate headcount and expenses. So we may want to do the same strategy of setting a filter. In this case, we're going to uh, set it on account, and then we will set it to uh, headcount here as well. You can also use the search if, you, if it isn't immediately apparent. which can be very helpful for finding uh, specific members. Uh, we're going to filter on a few other things as well. So from a movement, we're going to filter on our closings in this case. And then we're going to filter on uh, our audit. And the last thing we'll be filtering on is our time. So we just want to apply this for 2019. So we might as well filter on that as well. So now we're ready to start creating the calculations. And one of the nice things with the uh, visual formula editor is that it is very visual in nature. And so uh, we just have to, uh, within the prompts here, to kind of specify what we'd like to see. So here we'd like to do a calculation where we're looping through time because we want to calculate headcount over time. So we'll select time as our main value. And then we can start to simply create rules and calculations and it's all pretty straightforward here. So what we're going to do is we're going to first calculate our closing values. So we're going to select closing. And we're going to set that equal to our opening. And then we're going to add in our hires. And 
and then we're going to subtract or remove our attrition or anyone that's left the company in this case. Could be terminations, could be attrition, uh, just depending on how you model it and call this out in your particular scenario. So you can see this is pretty straightforward. We can also, uh, you know, by selecting the operators here, we can change those as well. So it's pretty easy to visually see what's going on. We have our closing. So this is, you know, at the end of the month, it's going to be equal to our openings, how many people we've hired, and then we're going to uh, subtract uh, whoever's left in that month as well, and that'll calculate the closing. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, see the next what the next uh, month's opening value is based on the closing value here. So that's going to be pretty easy to do as well. We'll just create another calculation, and this time we're going to select our movement of opening, and then we're going to uh, set that equal to um, our closing value. But there's a little extra trick is that we can, as part of our target scope, uh, uh, include additional members to do uh, kind of as part of our rule set. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to say, um, if we're in January, we want to set the opening for the next month. And to do that, we can uh, use these time functions here to make this very easy. So you can see a number of them delivered, like previous, next, uh, first, and last. In this case, we're going to use the next month to indicate that we're going to be seeding the next month. So if we loop through January through December, uh, in January, this the second formula will be seeding the February value here. In a very similar fashion, we're going to uh, just set this equal to the closing value. And this is really the uh, previous value that we've, we've calculated. So it's really that simple to create uh, calculations within SAP Analytics Cloud. And here you can see, uh, you know, we've created, we're looping through time, and we have our two formulas that are calculating our closing and opening uh, headcounts values. Uh, in addition to that, if you wanted to see the more detailed script that's being generated to do these calculations, you could view that here as well. So in the past, we've had to enter in these scripts. Uh, it really wasn't that difficult once you got in the flow of things, but I think having the uh, visual uh, formula editor here makes it much uh, simpler to create the scripts as well as follow the logic of what's going on. And really, uh, just to kind of complete this scenario here, uh, we can create another one here as well if we wanted to uh, do all the calculations as it, as it relates to the expenses. So this is going to be pretty straightforward here. We're going to enter in the filters. Uh, the first one will be headcount. We're going to set the movement equal to none. This is mainly based on how your particular model is set up. So uh, depending on where you're storing data for your calculations, you'll need to make these adjustments. We'll do audit here. Uh, we'll select stored calculations. And then for time, we'll do 2019. And you can see, uh, you know, as part of this, we did not add filters for entity and job, and it'll simply uh, loop through all those combinations of, of the, those two uh, dimensions. So to create our second round of formulas, this is going to be very similar to what we did in the past, uh, but we'll still run through it. So from an account, we'll, we'll select um, in this case, base salary. And then we're going to multiply this by the closing headcount. going to, uh, and here's where we add the average salary in here as well.
So you can start to see how easy it is to create these calculations visually as well. Uh, you know, base salary is just going to be our closing headcount times our average salary. If we'd like to, we can copy this a few times for our other calculations and then simply make some adjustments. So if we want to do car allowances, uh, we just simply select, um, in this case, car allowance. Uh, we're, gonna take it, we're going to multiply that by our headcount, in this case, our closing headcount, and then we're going to uh, change the uh, driver that we're using for this calculation. We're going to do the same thing with our hiring costs as well. So we'll take our hiring You can see I could find that in the hierarchy if I wanted to, but in this case, it was a little bit simpler just to uh, search for it. So we'll take hiring costs times our closing headcount, and then we'll multiply this by our average hiring cost. And really, the last thing we may want to do is do a uh, calculation based on tax. Uh, and that's pretty easy to do as well. So we're just going to select select in this type, in this this time the tax amount. You just select the account first. So we're going to uh, select tax, and you can see if we had expanded the hierarchy, they're all under this uh, this the overheads uh, section in our hierarchy as well. So tax in this case is going to be uh, multiplied by the base salary in this case. And this, this will be multiplied by the uh, average salary. Looks like I'm going to have to uh, switch some of my signs here, which hopefully I will remember to do. Oh, excuse me. It would be base salary times tax and our tax rate. So I had made a mistake in uh, how we described that. Uh, but it's simple, pretty simple to uh, see what we're doing here. So now when I look at this, uh, we have our tax times our base salary times tax to get that. So if you want to change the uh, our operator here, we just simply select it. And we're going to uh, change that to multiplication versus plus, which would be quite a bit of difference uh, in this scenario. So you can see it's very easy to visually see your calculation using SAP Analytics Cloud here. Uh, we could save this uh, into our model here and then add that into the model. If we'd like to, uh, we could create another uh, calculation as well related to moving the data from one model to another. Uh, I'm just going to take a look at this calculation uh, here in the system. And just to show you how it's set up, it's very similar to copying within a model. Uh, but the main difference here is that you're going to be uh, creating a rule to copy it between models. That's that cross model copy. We set the filters in the same way. We set what model we would like to send it to. So in this case, we're transferring our employee expenses to our operating income. We're setting our filters in this case. It's what version we're looking at, the account and the time. And then we have our specific mapping here as well. So here you can see our total personal costs from our headcount uh, planning model is going into salaries in our uh, P&L model. So um, pretty straightforward here. Uh, we have one where we have our, our employee expenses does not have a product group as part of the model. So here we set that value equal to not assigned or a pound sign. And we've simply selected all the regions as well as the time. Uh, for these calculations as well. So these are where there's a, there's overlap between the two models. Where the 
employee expense model has some dimensions that are not in the P&L model or the operating income model. Uh, they'll show up here, and this is just to give you a visual indication that these these are dimensions that are not are in the employee expense model, but not in the planning model. So we're not going to do anything at at this time with that information. And here you can see we saw the same uh, options of either appending or overwriting. So overwriting means it'll overwrite the values when it, it writes the data back. Appending means that it'll it'll add them to uh, the results set when it does when it executes. If we want to add this into uh, worksheet pretty easy to do as well uh, we simply let me just remove uh, our first headcount planning um, ju I just don't want to include this because it's already been done I want to make sure that we uh, are replicating the same calculation that's uh, that we're replacing in this case and so uh, once we save that We can simply add that into a model, and to do that, uh, if we wanted to uh, delete this model, we would simply select Edit, so we can make changes. Uh, we could then go to our plus thing and say, add a data action trigger, and that's what would place this, this button on the box. And you can move it around simply by dragging and dropping. So now we can see what we've called it. If we wanted to substitute out the name, here with our DA demo, uh, we would be able to do that. And now we're set to run um, this script with our new visual formula that we just created. So I'm just going to make a quick change here to our plan. We're going to add some people into uh, the plan in April. And we'll say in June. So I'm not necessarily worried about the why. We'll just say we needed to make some adjustments, uh, but then we can execute our data actions from the story here as well. So at this time, data actions are executed from the story uh, versus uh, in other places. Certainly, that'll be open for change in the future as well. So now you can see that we've recalculated our headcount here. And then we can transfer these values over to our planning model. And here you can see that our personnel costs have now been moved over from our planning model over to um, our p and model here. And we can see that uh, showing up. So that concludes this demo. And just wanted to provide an indication of how we can take advantage of uh, the uh, data actions to create very complex scenarios. Uh, the key points here is that when you do a data action, is actually storing the data. Uh, it's not a real-time virtual calculation that, you know, that occurs. The data is physically stored after it executes. So with that being said, I look forward to uh, continuing the discussion in the next unit.